I pray that this moment will open our hearts because the Bible tells us that today, this day, if you hear God's word, harden not your hearts. We know that we are not stiff-necked people because we know the, the, the outcome of our fathers who were stiff-necked. And we thank God for this generation that we are promising that we will keep up with God and be the remnant. We will sow ourselves deep, we will be rooted downwards, and we will bear fruits upward. Amen. Amen. So before I call on Pastor Sama to come and uh, exhort for her, for, for us, I just want us to, uh, I want to go real fast on Acts 1, 12. It says, then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, mm -hmm. which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. When they had entered the city, they went upstairs to the upper room where they were staying yes. indefinitely. Mm -hmm. When I looked at the Amplified Version and it says indefinitely. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that is, Peter, John, and then all the disciples were listed. All this with one mind and one purpose yes. were continually devoting themselves to prayer mm -hmm. along with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to make mention of the indefinitely waiting, staying in Hallelujah. the upper room indefinitely Hallelujah. and continue in prayers. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the vision, you can tell that this is a place of empowerment. This is a place where we are empowered to be able to do that which God has sent us to do. Mm -hmm. This is where he will facilitate your work by equipping you and uh, it's not a place where we come to hide our weaknesses because we are not perfect beings yet as in who Christ really wants us to be. So we keep growing. We come hungry that even the Spirit of God will be moving in us and penetrating every area of your body where there is darkness, whatever the challenges are, Amen. so that you will be able Amen. to go out there and Amen. overtake this world. Because if we realize Christ himself giving us the, uh, this assignment, he knew that it was not going to be easy. So he asked his disciples to go and wait for that empowerment, for the enabling. So they waited indefinitely. Yes. So we cannot get tired. Hallelujah. I'm saying this because of the snow that is outside there and you are here. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, it's like, you know exactly what God wants to do in our midst, what he wants to do in your life. That's why you made it through and you came here. Mm -hmm. So it is not in vain. God says he is looking for that person. And the truth is, as your heart, as you love him with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, he will begin to pour into you so that you can do his work on earth. Amen. Amen. So I will call on Pastor Sama to come and exhort. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I give God the glory for this very special opportunity. To be honest, I'm so humbled to come here. I... I had to brave everything because uh, we, I had a meeting with some pastors that took a long time. We had to leave and go somewhere else. But the evening came and I said, you know, I did not come here last time. I really wanted to honor this vision, to honor what God is doing here. Amen. And I had to dare to be able to be here. Normally I'm supposed to have another meeting, but I had to come here. I wanted to step in here Amen. to give an encouragement to Emmanuel and my, my, my dear sister. To motivate them. Let me tell you something. When you step out in faith to do something for Yahweh, Without any regard of your identity, mm. your personality, your background, your achievement and all that, like, you have stepped in the realm of the divine. Mm -hmm. And there is no way you can go without being blessed. Mm -hmm. I want to thank God for both of you. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something, we are not getting younger. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday I was 20 years old, I'm telling you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just yesterday. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. Just yesterday I was 20. Oh. Before I knew it, it was 40. Bam! <laughs> and the days are going yes. that said she just read in the book of Acts 1 which said and they waited indefinitely yes. what a joy to see all of you here Amen. 
honestly, the, the, the snow is the, the slush type of snow. Difficult and challenging, but you can. I saw Mama come and said, my God, it, this is really honorable. I give God the praise. Amen. Therefore, I want to thank God that you made it here. Amen. And I want to tell Emmanuel and my sister that when you put your hand on the plow, mm -hmm. don't you dare right. look back. Mm -hmm. Especially when you are doing it for the glory of the Lord God Almighty, for the sake of the kingdom, to promote the kingdom of God, and with the passion to see life transformed. Mm -hmm. God will lay his hand on it, mm -hmm. and you will not be the same again. Can someone say amen? amen. amen. I want to share something very briefly. I want to share something in the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 and 19. I just want us to read that scripture. Proverbs 29. I want someone to stand up, please read it for us. Loud and clear. Let us, let us hear what that scripture says. And we'll take it from there. And by the grace of God, the Lord is going to speak to me and you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Proverbs. All right. Proverbs 29, 18 and 19. 29, 18 and 19. Proverbs chapter 29, verse yes. 18 and 19. Yes. Please give me a minute. Let my brother and my sister have a seat. Oh, okay. Amen. 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 Right, right on, my dear. Where there is no vision, that is no revelation of God and His Word. Yes. The people are unrestrained. Mm -hmm. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. Amen. A servant will not be corrected by words on alone. For though he understands, he will not respond nor pay attention. This is the amplified version. Amen. I like it. Can someone say amen? Amen. Can we pray? Father, thank you. When you send your word, it's a seed. And Lord, when it falls in good ground, it will produce fruit. Father, I thank you for the reading of this word. I pray that Lord God Almighty has been really listened. Oh God Almighty, you are above glory. Your majesty, oh God, will be revealed. Your Shekinah glory will be manifested and your name will be glorified Father. in jesus precious name we pray amen. can someone say better amen amen my dear brethren when there is no vision the people perish there cannot be a people without a person a people start with a person i was a people before i knew it my family is a member of a family of six there can be no people without a person where there is no vision, what happens? The people perish. Therefore, where there is no vision, a person will perish. Where there is no vision, a church will perish. Where there is no vision in a family, that family will perish. This goes, this doesn't go with, without us taking into, taking into consideration some few things which are kindly basic. Now, when the disciples had to wait in that upper room that our sister read, I love that scripture. They were going with the conviction because the Lord had given them an order in verse 8. Now go in Jerusalem. There will be an upper room, not a lower room, an upper room. God is at a level where you cannot compare him with a man. God is at a level where you cannot compare with circumstances. I know we have problems. I know we have challenges. I know we have pain. I know we have situations that will buffet us. That will bring us to the brink of, of collapsing. I want to tell you God is not comparable to our problems. God is not measured to our pain. God is not measured to your frustration. God is not measured to that thing that will keep you behind. God is not measured to your pride. I know because of the $10,000 we have in the, in the bank account, we begin to walk with our shoulder crossing our heads. You are mistaken. God is not comparable to any amount of money we may have. God is not comparable to any type of beauty you can have. I just told you that just yesterday I was 20 years old. Do you remember your picture when you were 20 or 16? Oh my word. The whole high school knew you. Yes, guess what? Every single day goes, you will never see it again. Amen. I guarantee you, as every single day goes, you will never. Can someone say never? Never. You see this day that I just passed? We are almost at 8 p.m. today. This day, what's today's date? Hmm. 17th of February, 2018. You shall never see it again until you see the face of God. Yes. My dear beloved, when people do not have vision, they perish. What is vision? Is that conviction of the word of God that you are merely an instrument in the hands of Almighty God and it is by choice. You choose to keep your life, your potential, your beauty, your ability, your commitment, your, your, your devotion in the hands of Almighty God or you kindly, either by choice or by no choice, leave it in the hands of the devil. <laughs> you are either making a choice to leave it in the hands of Yeshua and Mashiach or you don't make no choice, 
Or you make a choice of leaving it in the hands of the devil. My people perish for lack of knowledge. It takes vision for a family to make sure that Christ is number one in that family. It takes vision for a wife to know that though my husband has this attitude, I am called by God to make him the best that he can be of who he is. It takes vision for you to look at your wife and say, though my wife has these weaknesses, these challenges, I am called by God to join to, to her, to become one, to make her produce the best she can produce of herself. Yeah. Brethren, we are lacking in many areas in our families. We are, we are failing to fulfill the purpose of God because we are without vision. Mm. We are without vision. I start to begin about, I have start to think about what is the best vision that can drive our lives. It's why we are here, the cupboard. Glory of God. Hallelujah, the best vision is that you know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what everlasting life that is the best vision you can ever have that in your family you don't fail not to have that vision that my family must be presented to god my family must seek god first that is the primary vision and many families do not have that vision unfortunately we are gathered here so that you will be empowered to love God, commit to God, and make sure you are not selfish with it, you share it out there. Amen. When you have a vision for heaven, you will not let anyone pass by you and go to hell. You will pro you will propose to them that vision and that commitment. Can someone say amen? amen. My people perish for what? Lack, lack of, knowledge. of knowledge, lack of vision. When you have vision, you'll be looking at your children every single day with the passion. Because you are longing that God is going to guide them on that very path of eternity that you are longing to inherit. My dear beloved, how I wish all husbands were, were primordially seeking heaven first. They will never deal with their life with your wives very disrespectfully. I wish all wives were pressing on for the mark of the high calling, which is entering in the bosom of the Lord God Almighty. They will never behave stupid towards their husband. It will not happen. That is the primary vision. Can someone say the primary vision? The primary vision. It is heaven, my dearly beloved. Amen. When you are pressing for heaven, you will not let some of those little stupid things around derail you. Mm. Do you know how many so-called Christian women are presently? Look, when you are a pastor, you hear all type of things and you see them all. Do you know how many that could be so-called Christians? How many of them are planning very hard to see that divorce go through? So they will claim this, yeah, you know. And they have some things also. They claim here and even plan to claim also at home where you are coming from. I'm from Cameroon, I don't know about you. They dare to they plan very well, they draw their plan within the years, they file, they start to pursue to claim. They will claim until they can claim part of your life. A brother, they claim him until they claim all his 401 or whatever that is. The brother stood at there and said, Okay, what am I put a man right now? And it, it is very many, not one example, dearly beloved, not one example. Oh, I thank God for these wonderful women here. Because I believe you have a vision, and that vision is heaven. When you trust God and you commit to heaven, you know that you are a blessing to your man and not a curse to his life. Can someone say amen? amen? You are an instrument that God will use to save many women out there, not to bring down their home. The wicked woman brings down her home. The woman of God, blessed of God, going to heaven. Builds her home and covers her home like the chicken with the little chicks. Can someone say hallelujah? Yeah. That is what it is. Every good man that wants to have a good home, you will always press on to make sure that your wife is in the presence of God. Because there is vision. And when they grasp the, the vision, you are a happy man. Can someone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. So therefore, men here, if you are married, do everything. Then the wife should be where? In the of God. And it starts with you. So men stay home. I even have one in my church. He stays home. You people must go to my church. You must go there. He pushes them to go. He stays in home. <laughs> so before they come out, the man he may be drunk and all broken down. He is home. And I love that, my dear brother. Let me tell you. We men. Make sure you stand at the priest of your home and possess that vision. Endow yourself with that vision and release that vision upon your family and tell them. Don't take this for granted. I am saying what? Tell them. My family, I tell you, if we are going to seek something first, it will be the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then every other thing we desire shall be our portion. My children, you are blessed, you lay hand. My daughter, you are blessed, you lay hand. Your wife, you say, baby, you are blessed, you lay hand. You 
are the priests of your home. That is the sign, the sign of a man with a vision. Can someone say vision? Vision. That is it. Amen. That's the man with the vision. That's why thank God for Emmanuel and this woman. This is vision. You don't take it for granted. And remember, it's not going to go without attacks. It's not going to go without pressure. You are going to make sure that in this place, life are saved, and you send them, you pull them, and push them to the church. You're going to make sure that lives are transformed so that they will progress in their own life. People will come here, they will be equipped. Wow, this, oh my God, is this how sweet the Christian life is? Yeah. This is what we want. Now, to be somewhere where with lights are all black and some blue and red, and you're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where there is no vision, the people do what? I got a message that came to me to my phone. It's not too long ago. And the message was saying that in the church, the pastor decided to say that all the men that are being bullied and tormented by their husbands, they are being subjugated by let them move and go one side. The men all of them, they move on one side. One man alone stood. The pastor said, Oh, praise the Lord. That at least there is one man that, that is not tormented by the wife. This thing in this life is so serious. Women are tormenting people. They say, brother, what happened? How do you do this thing? How do you manage this thing that this woman does not torment you? She said, guess what? It's even because she told me not to move. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone say hallelujah? Yeah. Just a little one to tell you, my dear love, when, when there is no vision, the people perish. If this man had a vision in his home, and had established the vision, and is pressing on the vision, trusting God on the vision, things will not be the same again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Can someone read that for me? Because I see what my sister, what this vision is saying here, is very, very powerful. And I can't remember that. Can you read for me, my dear? Matthew 7, verse 19. Yes. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Mm. Can someone say amen? amen? Amen. God is therefore looking forward to seeing us being productive in our language, in our activities, in our engagements, in our relationships. Before the year ended, I shared with the brethren and I said there is going to be need for a serious indoor hard work. You need to review all your friends. Do you know if you are a problem today, a headache to your family? 50% contributing factor is your connections. I said review all your friends. Evaluate their contribution in your life. That has always been the thing that is sucking you out. They cut off from being friends. Now, I'm not saying that you see and say, I told you, my pastor told me, friendship is finished right now. No, I don't want to see you by my side. No, that's not what I mean. No, I mean you are going to be a child of God. You are going to be calm and you'll be full of love. But yet, as concerning things that build, construct, guide, propitiate you, you have nothing to do with such a one. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you have vision, you will select those you deal with with daily cases. When you have vision, you will know those you can communicate with. When you have vision, when you sit somewhere, then the conversation starts. You realize that people's names are now being called and put on the table. You start shouting and run, and run for your life. When you have vision, you will never want your ear to hear what you are not supposed to hear. When you have vision, you will never want to sit in a place and they are, they are planning something that is going to be negative. And you see, they say, well, I didn't just want to say something. No, I just stay me quiet. Right there. But you were seated there and you did not intervene to say this is wrong. When you have vision, you will select your friends, you will select your words, you will challenge your character, and you will hold your character under the microscope to ensure that Christ will be glorified every inch of the way. Can someone say amen? Amen. Last point before I take my seat is this. There are many times we are in the church, but we are without vision. We are celebrated Sunday Christians. Big time celebrated Sunday Christians. You make sure that the, 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 the four Sundays of the year, you've already gotten the four different dresses you put on on those Sundays. You don't repeat any one of them. And you come every time in a very wonderful celebrant way, and yet you go back. Though the message was so wonderful, 
you go back and you cannot remember a word. When you have a vision, every time when you come in the presence of God, Father, what, you, what have you got for me today? Last Sunday you told me that faith moved mountains. That if I have faith like a monster seed, I'm going to move mountains. Lord, what do you have for me today? Father, use your servant. Speak into my life. Visit me and transform me. Equip me for a glorious week, a glorious month. When you sit in the presence of God in that manner, you have vision. And vision attracts vision. You will feed it. You will be stronger and you will be significant in the body of Christ. Being significant in the body of Christ is not a position. It's a passion and a commitment for God. Come on, say amen. amen. Being significant in the kingdom of God is not what a position. It's a passion and a commitment. Because the Bible says in John 15, 16, you have not chosen yourself. I, God, have chosen you and ordained you and sent you forth. That you should go forth and go and bear fruit. And that the fruit should do what? Remain. Therefore, you don't just bear her has a fruit. The fruits you bear, they do what? They remain. Because what's the amen? Amen. We now do when we sit now in church, you sit there like a lock of wood, you don't do nothing. You know, they don't give you for all my will is there. Huh? We'll be here for all this we You fail because God doesn't work like that. I grew up in the Apostolic Church in my country, Cameroon. And behold, in the Apostolic Church, we have powerful anointed fathers in the Lord. Most of them have gone to be with the Lord now. But I remember that some of these men of God, one of them powerful, and never stood one day and cursed at him, stupidly, and hit him, he fell down. The man was very smallish. The man got up and tried to wipe himself and go away. It didn't take him out one week, he fell down and died. That's the type of anointing. But there was one mama in no men, one mama that believed in Jesus, committed to Christ, a die hard of the Lord, trusting God always, whenever she sees the presence of God. God was using her mightily in the realm of healing. Real healing, you don't mess up. She simply needs to stand. And just Papa, God, remember you have a kingdom. We will be doing well, you know well. That's all it takes. So they'll bring her in the national convention. After the big pastors have preached the powerful big messages by the big people, they say, Mama, please, can you come now and pray for the sick? Mama comes up in the mama hood, mama ability, mama attire, mama language. She speaks like mama from no men, because also no men from the village. She simply speaks in that manner. Did she change her identity? No. Did she change her personality? That no, now I'm a prophet. I'm this. Did she do that? No. She remained herself, but she was in vision. And vision was practical. Vision was manifesting. She simply needs to pick up the phone and say, Papa, I will make you hear me. I'm looking man. Mm. It took place. Lame people were walking, bones were cracking and coming together because Mama stood and God used her. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You sit at the door that people are passing left and right. You don't say, Jack, what are you waiting for? You go past doing things, you don't say anything. What are you waiting for? Time doesn't wait for anybody. God is therefore calling for me and you to arise and, 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 and get this vision. Step up to vision. Act on vision and begin to live a life of greater expectation because you are a seed. You are a weapon. You are a message that God has sent. Therefore, don't hold it back. Arise amen. to the occasion. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May he continue to inspire you. Amen. May he continue to guide us. Amen. And may he bless this man and this woman. Amen. And may he manifest himself. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray. Amen. You know, I've said these few things. I was about to say, but the Lord said I should pray for you. If you know that you just heard something that pricked you a little bit. And you want Pastor Samuel to say a word of prayer. Please rise up. You are committed. You, I really want God to touch me. In this area that he spoke. Just rise up in honor to God. Let us have prayed together. I am a servant of God. This is my job. As a matter of fact, I'm a full-time pastor. By faith. <laughs> yes. But take note, my dear brother, as you look at me today. This is not a mistake as we got it. I never knew one day this, this guy will be honoring God, giving God the first place. And honoring God... In such a manner, a man of honor. <laughs> Therefore, that is how that's how powerful this is. Amen. Therefore, I want God to touch you because this is another example. God can use anybody, mm. anytime, mm. anywhere, mm. to the glory of His name. Amen. People will be shocked. They can hate you for it. It's a matter of time. They will come down 
in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Father, thank you for all your, your sons and daughters standing up, O great God Almighty, at this moment, in response to this which you have spoken to us. My Father, with grace present, with the Kabot glory, with the Shekinah glory present, with your power present as the great I am that I am, may you respond to your prayer right now. Can you begin to speak to God in that area that you are committed? Can you talk to him right now and say, Father, this is me. Speak to me. Can you touch me? Let, ask God to do that you want to have what that which you want him to do at this moment. Can you ask him to do it? Do that with conviction. Do that in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm simply going to affirm it and declare it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, great I am. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, my Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree everything your children have declared. I affirm it in Jesus' name. Father, I decree from this very moment, moving forward, their lives will not be the same again in Jesus' name. The world will hear your children. The city will hear your children. Their jobs are will hear them. Their homes will taste of your, of your majesty. Because you have begun a great thing and you will take it to fulfillment. Let the name of our Heavenly Father be glorified forever as we pray and sign in Jesus' name. I pray for your mother and your daughter that they will continually prosper. You will continue to reveal great things to them. You will open greater avenues for them for the glory of your mighty name. And may you bless their business, bless their endeavor for the glory of your powerful name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. I know um, when I was still in high school, Pastor Summer would always come around and then to minister. I had my other friends who had believed already. And I remember they would call him Brother Apo. Yeah. <laughs> Apostolic Brother. <laughs> but I was headstrong. This is Pastor Summer, the Pastor Summer who tried while we were in to bring us to Christ, but. I did not like the idea at all, and I would run away from people like this. Yes. So I know that when we met in Maryland, he was so uh, <laughs> amazed to see me <laughs> and know that I have believed. So we thank God. Amen. And the truth Amen. is, the seed that you sowed never died. Amen. 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 And I believe that's how the word of God is. The word of God is alive. The Bible tells us that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. It says. The word of God cuts through, even through your spirit and your soul. Can you imagine the fine line? Sometimes you cannot really define the line, but the word of God is able to define it and cut through. Amen. The word of God is able to separate your bone and your marrow. And it says the word of God is a discerner of the heart of man, the intents of your heart. So the word that I had received that I thought was useless then, because I, you know, I think it was rebellion and it was like a mirror that I did not want to take a look at. And finally, it grew, and Amen. today I am here, and I'm so grateful. Amen. And one thing I would always say is that, from my experience, which I always want to talk about, there is no better place to be than in the house of God. Amen. There is no better place to be than to be in the kingdom. Because the Bible tells us that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the, in Holy, the Holy Ghost. Yes. And the reality is, where will you run to? This is a world where you cannot run from trouble. <laughs> So unless you are a kingdom citizen, honestly, you cannot experience that joy and peace. And that's why what I've realized, it works. The word of God works. It's powerful. It, when we don't apply it, we may think it doesn't work. Reading it is one thing. Applying it is another. Even when you look like a fool, apply it. Even when you don't understand why, apply it. And the truth is, you will be surprised why you feel the way you feel. There are circumstances that on my own, I will not tolerate. And guess what? When I don't tolerate it, I don't win anyway. I'm tormented. But guess what? When I submit to the word, you, the world may think you are foolish. But the truth is, the world doesn't know the joy that is in you. The world doesn't know what you are enjoying. Just, you know, submitting to what God has given you as his word over situations. Like what uh, our pastor just talked about, he talked about the, 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 the pastor that somebody slapped and he got up and just dust himself. You know a man of the world would not do that, right? Mm -hmm. Even if he doesn't have the strength, he will get a police. Yes. 
or he go and calls for his kids to come and handle them. <laughs> but he knew that the fruits of the spirit had to manifest in Amen. his life. That's why sometimes you have to talk to yourself as a human being. We have to. You talk until you believe it. Even now, I still do the same. I'm like, Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost. Sometimes somebody might think you are rude. Or even when you sing, you minister to yourself when you're going through a situation, some people might think you are singing to provoke them. No. I'm putting myself under control. Because the Amen. flesh will try Amen. to rise up. The flesh will try to make you fight. But the reality is you have to remember who you are and talk to yourself until you believe it. And then it manifests. And then you see, peace comes in. Amen. So that's why the Bible says you pursue peace. Right? You have to pursue it. It's not waiting. You pursue it. It's running. You pursue peace. And the kingdom of God also, you take it by force. That righteousness, peace, and joy, you have to take it by force. If not force, you cannot have it. You cannot have peace. You cannot have joy. So you have to force yourself to be in it. Amen? Amen.